Hey, what's going on everybody? Alex here with Freedom Mowers. I hope you all are doing well. We are going to be jumping onto a zero turn today, but if you guys are new to the channel, I appreciate you stopping by. We'll jump right to it. I'm going to show you guys what we've got. This is a 2007 White Outdoors, which should be an MTD company, CT54. This has a Briggs & Stratton twin on it, which I believe is a 26 horsepower. The model is a 44 Papa 777, and I looked that up earlier and it appeared as it was a 26 horsepower. This has a 54 inch cutting deck on it There's not a whole lot that I know about this. I got this last year with a Craftsman LT 1000. I bought the pair from a family and they sold both of them to me for $200 so Basically, they were a hundred dollars a piece or this was two hundred dollars and the other one was free However, you want to think about it. The only thing that they knew was there were some deck issues with this which we're gonna get into um, it was not running at the time because the battery was disconnected and was dead and also I did notice that the uh, tab on the starter had been disconnected and I looked I don't know if you guys can see or not but the positive adapter on there is kind of broken off so other than that I don't know how many hours are on it don't think the engine's locked up. The uh, engine shroud was pretty much off from it. We do have the spindle covers. Overall, it seems complete, and I'm hoping that there's nothing crazy going on with it, but we are gonna get right into it and find out. So let me get this pulled in the shop, and we're gonna get going. We are gonna be checking over the fluids, air filter, all that stuff. We're gonna give this thing a good look over Oil looks perfect in here, like brand, brand new. And it's right up to the full mark. Oil filter just looks a little dirty, but they may have changed that at the same time. Now, the pre-filter on this looks dirty, but if you guys can see, the filter itself looks about brand new. So far, we are looking pretty good. I'm curious, though, as to why the engine shroud was off. Because there's a... I'll show you guys. I think it should come right off. Yeah, see, we're missing the um, that little plastic shroud that goes on the top. Which, it doesn't really matter. Because uh, all the cooling should still be just fine with the shroud on there and the fins. Well, let's take a little look in here. What we got going on. Coils seem to look okay. Gap on this side looks bigger than the gap on this side. Nothing really to fret about at the moment. We are not locked up. Feels like it's got good compression. All right. The fins don't look too bad in here either. A lot of times if these get caked up, we're going to have overheating problems, head gaskets, head warp. So this is a fuel pump unit. Our tank is right here. I guess we can smell this fuel. O-ring is still intact. Gas actually smells fairly fresh. What do we want to do first on this? Let me get the jumper pack. Let's go ahead and hook up to our positive and negative. I did, so there was one thing I've done on this, and yesterday I took the battery off from here because I tested it. It was at about 9 volts. I wanted to see if it would charge up. I have this battery tester that Roger McDonald sent over, which is pretty awesome. Uh, I tested this. It's a 230 cold cranky amp battery. Charged it overnight. Came back. I think around like 30% health. 
uh, but it is holding a charge so we'll, we'll test that for now let's throw the jumper pack on here let's see if we can even get power to it uh, see if the hour meter turns on then we'll go from there trying to figure out what we're going to do with this starter and trying to get this thing turning over all right i've got the pack hooked up it does look like somebody at some point has maybe changed out the ground on the the end on the ground and the one on the positive side looks a little questionable all right so we turned on the seat up uh change oil 51 uh i don't know i don't know if that's pulling up the hours i don't think 51 is what's actually on this machine if there was actually 51 hours on here that would be pretty crazy because that's like almost brand new let me see if y'all can hear this too because as soon as i turn that key on accessory i could hear the anti-backfire solenoid turn on Okay, so our anti-backfire solenoid is working. We are getting power, at least to the dash. I'll get the multimeter hooked up to the positive end that should go to the starter. We'll see if we're getting 12 volts to that. And then I guess we'll see about either swapping the starter out or see if we can at least maybe get the lead to touch over here and see if we can get this to spin over. All right, just making sure y'all can see everything. I've got my ground set up on the ground wire. I was just making sure we had connection uh, to the hot side. So now, I'll go ahead and put the alligator clip onto there. So when I turn this on, we should see 12 volts. 12.42, and I heard the solenoid click. So we are good from the key switch to the starter. I'm going to see if I can just pop the starter off and take a look to see if I've got another one. Got these cracked loose a second ago. These are uh, a T40 bit. And the starter's out. So you guys can see now that this thing was just dangling there. These do actually break quite frequently. You just got to get a... You can put some JB Weld in there and put it back as long as the wire connections are still good. So... Let me see what I got in the stash pile. All right, I got this one off a of 24. Yeah, 24 horsepower. We should be, I looked at them both, they look the same, although the teeth are a little more gnawed up on this one. But we will go ahead and bench test this just to make sure it's gonna work. I did clean up the terminal a little bit with a wire brush, but here we go. Would say we are good with that it's at least rotating and doesn't sound super noisy so let me just pop this back on just got those two bolts and we'll get this uh, positive lead snugged up all right just got that snugged up what I am gonna do is just check the alignment by spinning this up so just get it started and then just move it by hand make sure it's turning over there's no binding and that feels smooth so we should be good I'll probably go ahead and disconnect the fuel just because I don't want if there's moisture in there going into the carburetor because uh, I just don't know where we're at with things yet so I'll probably just disconnect the fuel line and put that into a bucket we can also test at that point to see if the fuel pumps working too so let me get this hooked up and we'll get going the factory fuel line was a little too short to get enough room down to a can to catch that so I just put another piece in for now so we are disconnected from the carb I've got the jumper pack hooked up here we go <laughs> fuel pumps working let's just hit it with a little bit of spray and see if we can get this thing to kick over Uh, 
look at the uh look at the rust water that just blew out the muffler that's nasty well fired right up after a second uh it sounded like it was running on both cylinders and we have filled a ton of gas so let me i've got a little container that we should be able to see at the bottom if we've got some water in there we'll pump a little bit of fuel real quick we'll test that and then if it's good i guess we'll go ahead and try to hook up the fuel line and see if it'll actually run on its own or what's going on with it all right i got this uh little butter container it's white so that's when you can really see uh, any kind of moisture in there so i'm gonna go ahead and turn this over <laughs> It really doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna give it a minute to settle, and then uh, I don't see anything in here. I guess we'll go ahead and we'll hook up the fuel line, and we'll put the top shroud at least loosely back on there. So if it does run, uh, we're not gonna be um, overheating or anything, because that top shroud is what actually helps uh, keep the engine cool. I'm not seeing anything in there. It is a little yellow, but I would say let's run it. So let me hook up the uh, factory fuel line. So I got the shroud on. We should be good to go. I've got the choke still on. All right, here we go. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, I bought this a year ago. They said it had been sitting a couple years. They had to have been running some non-ethanol fuel in here for that to be running as good as it is for probably three years sit time. What do you guys say? Let's try to throw that battery back in here. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna throw the battery in here and we're gonna see if we can get this thing to move. The hydro disengages on here are on either side. They were pulled out so I could Pulled this thing into the shop. I yanked it in here with a tow, uh, a uh, strap. This thing was heavy. So, all right, let me get that hooked up. We're gonna test and see if we got some movement. I'm hoping with the battery health on it that uh, will at least work for us. All right, so the hydros are engaged. Let's choke again. And here we go. No go. All right, let's throw the jumper pack on it. Come on. So you just ran for me. Chokes on. Here we go.
abnormal noises. The uh, adjustment's a little bit off. You can see where that corner is on that one versus that one. That's why it's sitting a little bit different. I don't like how close this is to my knees, but I'm tall, so. supposed to put the levers out before I set the brake yeah I'm wondering if the tracking adjustment is off on this one though looks like our arm is a little past halfway on that side uh, yeah this one yeah they're different from each other so we'll probably have to adjust the tracking on here the hydro sounded good all right, so we're gonna get going on figuring out what's going on with that side hydro. I did open up the reservoir after just pulling this in here. There are some markings, which I don't think you guys are gonna be able to see, but there is a line towards the bottom and a line towards the top that says uh, full cold or full hot. And we didn't really warm these up at all. And it is right up to the full line for full cold. And there's plenty of fluid in there so we should be pretty good as far as um, oil for the hydro system now I'm gonna go ahead and get the wheel and tire off from here that way we can have good access and then we'll get this thing jacked up and we're gonna have to have it running but I'll show you guys because the way it is right now when you take this out of its groove it springs right forward so we need to adjust that but let me get this wheel and tire off and I'll show you all what's going on it's three quarter inch on these nuts all right so what we are gonna be doing we will be getting the wheel basically to stop spinning when it is in the neutral position in the handlebar. I've got this Allen wrench. We're basically gonna crack this loose. I'll just go ahead and leave it on there. So we're gonna start the machine up, see if this is spinning, and then we're gonna loosen this up and we are gonna move the arm until we can get this into its neutral position. And that should get us realigned. I'm not sure how long it was into that where the GoPro battery died but <clears throat> issue I was having is basically I was trying to get it set but every time I put it actually in the groove it needs to sit in to be on the safety switch I couldn't get it to sit right in the neutral position so what I ended up having to do uh, was to rotate the little end here on the rod that comes off from the hand control and get that adjusted I'll show y'all but uh, I just had to go between the two and let's see up break on 
think we're in pretty good order now though um also because it's going to be loud when i crank this up but you'll see now that this bolt basically meets up uh with the front of this when we go into the full forward position so and that's what the other one was doing uh that way we should have full speed out of both hydros so let's crank it <laughs> we've got that pretty much solved now I'm sure you guys are gonna say look at all the oil down here uh, I'm not exactly sure where everything is coming from yet we're gonna have to give this thing a good pressure wash to even begin to see where there could be oil coming from it looks to me like there's definitely a leak on the oil line it's coming right off the engine block which could be going down to that pulley and spring everywhere, I don't know. Um, but like I said, the fluid was good in the reservoir. I think we've got that set. I'm going to go ahead and get the wheel back on. We'll get this cranked up and we'll take this out for another little test loop around the yard and see if these hydros feel a little bit better and if both handles are matching speed. I am also going to adjust the arms back here. I'm going to tilt them back because I like them personally closer to me. Uh, so I'm just going to have it in the full back position. But in order to do that, I just got to loosen those nuts and tighten them. So I'm going to get all that done and I'll show you guys when we're cranking this up and pulling it out of the shop.
Did not seem like we're charging though. Which is unfortunate. We'll start checking over stuff though. See if the voltage regulator is good, where we're getting power at. But so far, we've got this thing running, driving, and the hydros feel good. So that's a huge win already in itself. That could be possibly why they had the top cover off. Maybe there was charging issues. I don't know. Got a little bit of some problems going here with uh, getting our, in our way of moving forward. Uh, after I pulled this in the shop, I did take a look at the mowing deck on here. And I'll show you all a couple of the things that I found. The blower shroud is back off up here. I'll show you all in a minute. So... The other two spindles don't feel too bad, but you can see this one down here, our bottom bearing, it looks like, is toast. Now it does have brand new blades on it, which is going to save a good amount of money. So we need a bearing at least for that one. The middle spindle was kind of frozen up i was able to get that loosened up and it doesn't sound too bad but then this side you guys can hear that it's pretty loud so i think what i'm going to go ahead and do is pop off the nut and the pulley here we're going to see if we can get a part number off from the bearing that's on here and see if we can get six of those ordered also there is a pulley that goes right here that is completely missing. I'll go ahead and show you guys. Let me jump around to the back of the shop. I've got another deck that's the same as this, and I'll show you guys which pulley's missing. So I've got this uh, Cub Cadet 50-inch deck, but I believe these should be the same. Um, that idler is a bit noisy also. Um, but this is the pulley that's missing, so I need to figure out what size this is, and we'll get that ordered as well. It does look that it's just a nut and bolt and just the pulley, so it shouldn't be too much for that. But I'll show you guys what else is going on with the mower. So I ran the machine a little bit longer and started doing some testing on it, and we are definitely not charging at all. And we need to have a good charging system on this machine because we have electronic PTO and so it's going to be pulling quite a draw um, to run the mowing deck on here. Now this one does have kind of a uh, different stator or alternator than I've seen before. This one is just a single wire that comes off from the alternator underneath the flywheel comes out it's actually this this black wire here and then it turns into a yellow which goes into the regulator and then comes out as the red and that's our 12 volt source um, now I have my alligator clip for my ground on the engine block and from my understanding we should not have any kind of continuity between the engine block and the stator and if I test right here on this lead, uh, I am getting a reading. So let's check. We'll just test everything real quick. I'll put that to the ground. Yep. Just cut. Whoops. I pulled the clip right off. So we got continuity. And then there should be no reading here. But as you guys can see getting a reading so I believe that our stator is shorted out underneath of the flywheel we need to get some parts on order I believe we're gonna go ahead and pull the flywheel off from this today uh, take a look at everything and then I'll get a list together of what all we're gonna need and then we're probably gonna do a part two on getting everything else done on this I know it's got quite a bit still needs to be done but so far I'm excited the engine sounds healthy it seems to be running pretty decent. Our hydros seem to be good. So yeah, we're making good progress, but let me get y'all set up and we're gonna pop this flywheel off, take a look at that alternator. We've gotta pull the fan off the top first. Should just be these two <clears throat> half inches. 
I don't even know if I have a socket that's big enough for this flywheel bolt. But let me see what I got here. And then at least we are threaded though. I've got a puller that we can use to pull this up. So I did in fact have a socket that fits. Don't think it's exact, but this is a 32 millimeter. Hopefully this is gonna knock it. I think we should be good there. keep track and make sure I don't lose the key yeah, it's just about to fall off magnets all look good see if there's any obvious damage I'm wondering if that wire maybe got shorted somewhere I don't see any spots it's a bare wire see I'm not really sure with this one how to test is that the correct way to test these? Because it seems like this is grounded. I don't see any kind of um, uh, insulation or anything between the, the stud in this. And it doesn't look burned up at all. Got to see if I can do a little more research on this, but... All right, well, it is the next day. I was able to get the stator off from here. I still don't know exactly. Maybe if you guys, I know a lot of people that watch the channel work on mowers too, uh, have ever tested a single wire stator like that one before and are able to tell if it's good or bad. I just wasn't quite sure. I don't think I'm supposed to get continuity between uh, the engine and the stator. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is try to use a parts machine that I've got that is uh, has an electronic PTO and we'll just go ahead and take the whole setup off from there, the voltage regulator and the stator as long as they're compatible and we'll swap that whole thing over and see if we can get this thing charging. I know there are a few other things on here that need to be done. You know, we got a lot of cleaning up to do. We're gonna get the new bearings put in the spindles. We have some painting to do, a lot of cleanup on the whole machine, check for leaks. I think we got our hydros dialed in, just small things that need to be tidied up so we can get this thing looking as good as it can and functioning properly. I appreciate you guys stopping by as always and uh, if you like this kind of content maybe think about hitting that subscribe button thumbs up and leaving me a comment i love hearing from you guys and i try to respond as best as i can to all the comments so on that note let freedom ring let those small engines sing i'll see you all next time